I am live. Welcome everyone. What's up? I'm Rebecca. You are watching Rebecca the Reseller. I don't know why I can never say my normal intro thing when I go live. Like it just never works out. But anyway, I hope everyone is doing well. Today is a great day. I don't know if you saw my Instagram post, but not yesterday, the day before I got my uh, COVID vaccine. <laughs> and so I was like so down for the count the last two days. It really kind of walloped me, but I'm just feeling better today. And so, you know, when you're sick and you all of a sudden start feeling better then you literally want to like get everything done. And so that's kind of where I'm at right now. <laughs> it's like, I just want to get so much done. And then some new things came out with Poshmark today for the shipping discounts, which we knew was coming, but I didn't know I was going to get access to it today. And so I dropped everything I had planned to do and started working on these Poshmark shipping discounts things. I did a video, it is on my channel. It's been getting you know a lot of views. So if you haven't seen it yet, when you're done with the live, go ahead maybe and check out the Poshmark shipping discounts video that I did because I share with you exactly what I'm doing, exactly how I'm handling it. Um, so I'm also just going to, I know I should have done this before I hopped on, but I didn't get a chance. I'm just gonna put on here, I'm sorry to waste your time, live on YouTube now, because I, there's nobody, oh, there's oh there's some people here. I was like, there's nobody here, I have nobody. <laughs> well, hello, the people that are here. I'm so sorry to be rude. Normally I do this right before I come on, but I was finishing up testing something in Canva, and I just wanna put this in, and then we're gonna get right to the content. So bear with me, everyone. I do apologize, but I want to get that link in there. Okay. I think I did it. So, hey, everyone. Hope you are all doing well. Go ahead and say hi in the chat. Let me know that you can see me and hear me and all of that because I haven't seen any comments or anything. So I just like to make sure everything is good. Today's topic. <laughs> Sorry that took so long. Um, today, hi, Rebecca. Hi, flight attendant flipper. That's fun. I love that. Um, so today's topic is all about listing faster. And it's funny because I had probably two or three people in the span of less than two weeks, maybe like 10 days, all kind of ask about how do I list? How can they list more quickly? What could they pop? You know, what are they doing that's tripping them up? Um, you know, just some tips and hacks and things to list faster. And there are so many ways that you can list, you know, do it in two parts like I do, which I'll explain, do it all on the computer, drop your photos in, do it all on the phone. And then, you know, you're typing with your, you know, clumsy thumbs or whatever. And so there's just so many ways to do things that I'm going to kind of go over three sets of things and then we can have our conversation. Hey Beth, I'm so excited that you are here. Um, holding you back. So what's holding you back from listing faster? So we're going to talk about some of those, then what I actually do, and then some tips that I have. So let's start with what's holding you back so we can kind of set the scene. And then people, if you can just kind of jump in with like, are some of these things resonating with you? Are these some of the things that may be holding you back perhaps from listing faster? And the first I said was trying to do it all on your phone. I think for some of us, we're better typers on the computer than we are on the phone. And so uh, we can talk about the process that I have, which is basically because of that. I am terrible at typing on the phone, but I'm much better at doing it on the computer. But I do think certain things are better on the phone. So trying to do it all on your phone could be something that's holding you back. Not having a system at all could be something that's holding you back. You guys know I love me a good system and I have a system for pretty much everything. I feel like at this point I've kind of shared all my systems with you guys between all of my videos and sometimes even more than once, like, you know, my inventory system. And I do share with you how things change. But if you never really sat down and said, this is my listing system, then that might help you because it can get all your eggs in one basket and you can kind of work through it. So not having a system we can talk about. So again, guys, just put it in the chat, you know, if any of these are things that you want to talk further about, because uh, I'm just going to kind of list them through. Researching stock photos, that can be a big thing that can prevent you from listing faster because you're spending too much time researching stock photos. Researching comps, that can also kind of gum up the works when listing. 
stressing about the perfect price. So researching comps can take a long time, but then also just kind of deciding what price you want to make it and you want to make that perfect price, of course, that can take time. Writing your description. So some people just have a harder time writing the description. Maybe you're good with the title, but then you get down to the description and you're like, there's all this space. I know I need to put a lot of good things and I've got nothing. I don't know how to describe this item or it takes me too long to look up the information I need to describe this item or I want to write something salesy but I'm a very black and white person and don't have all the like flair of words to write a fancy catching description um, or I just don't know what I should put in there and then procrastination just like flat out procrastination <laughs> could keep you from listing and I totally understand that because listing is not one of my favorite things to do and for a long time I had a VA help me with it and now that I'm doing it all myself even though I do it I can really see how people can get it you know how they can procrastinate it you know I, I don't think I have a motivation issue but I do have sometimes a uh, wanting to procrastinate issues. <laughs> so that could be something holding you back. Being a perfectionist, that can hold you back super duper. And I have uh, a couple of clients. I've done a lot of reseller chats recently, which are you know my version of coaching or consulting. I don't like to call it that. I call it reseller chats. It makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> I like to call it just reseller chat to, you know, I have a couple people that are like ongoing. We talk, you know, every week or every other week. And then some people just a one-off thing. But but there's someone that I've been talking with regularly and we've really been trying to work on how she can list faster because there's just a lot of things that are hol holding her back in this regard. Like she she feels like she has to put everything about that item um, and it's taking her a long time to research all of that or it's taking her a long time as i said earlier to like actually write the description even if she has all the information writing the description then takes a long time researching the comps when i showed her how i researched comps she was like that was way faster <laughs> than what i do so um being a perfectionist and wanting to have all of the ducks in a row and doing everything to a T serves you well in certain parts of reselling, but doesn't serve you well in others and can really hold you back, especially from listing faster. Um, and then next I have in this area of holding you back, trying to have all the information complete. So going along those same lines of feeling like you need to have every possible keyword. No, you just need to have enough keywords. If you can add more, great. But if you're stumped, then move on. I think the point that I'll have kind of overall with this is knowing when to say enough is enough. I need to move on. You're the only person that can do that for yourself. I wish I could have a little like, you know, ding timer. <laughs> I told my client, I said, pretend I am, you know, the little evil or the little angel on your on your shoulder that's saying, stop working on this. That's enough. Hit update and listen. <laughs> like I could just be that person that's like, stop doing that. So because for me, I'm like, bing, 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 done. Bing, 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 done. And I don't care. Like I just get it done. I don't know if it's like, if it's a me thing, if it's a, you know, a lot of people say done is better than perfect. Um, maybe it's like a mom of young kids thing because like you're used to your life being a hot mess so <laughs> then everything else gets to be a hot mess and you know when you're, you don't have little kids anymore and you have older kids you're used to being able to make things a little bit more how you want I don't know what it is but I'm like bing 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 done so that's just some general topics about what could be holding you back and i'm not going to go through all of those things unless we have some chat about it so you know those are the areas that i feel like could be a could be a thing that's holding you back and so put in the chat if that's something that resonates with you something that you want to talk about more questions that you have about it then we can go through that more specifically now as far as what i do because i feel like this is more the meat of what i have as far as what i do I load in the photos on my phone and make a draft. And I've talked about my listing process previously. I've made a few videos. I have a listing template video. When I take my photos, I go ahead and I use PicTap Go to update just the cover photo to make it brighter. That's a batch thing that you can do in your iPhone. So that literally takes me like three seconds. I go select, select, select all 10 of my photos, 12 of my photos, however, I, however many items I photographed. 
click, you know, lights on, boom, they all get updated. So now all my photos are ready. And then I just open up the Poshmark app when I'm sitting and eating lunch, when I'm sitting and snuggling Malia. It used to be when Gio was napping. Now he's not really napping. So now I just kind of find a time to sit on the couch and chill for a few minutes and upload my photos into a draft. Now, sometimes all I do is just drop the photos in the draft and then I close out the draft and save it. Sometimes if I have a little bit more time, I'll sit and actually fill out the fields. So brand, size, whatever, you know, all the fields, category, whatever, so that I think that's easier to do on the phone and faster to do on the phone. So I put the photos in and then I do the fields and I save it. And that's all I do that day. So I take photos, I upload the photos to the draft and that's part one. The next day, early in the morning, when I wake up and I'm doing my normal like morning routine, which I've recently talked about in, it was the first episode of Reseller Life. I went through my day, a day in my life and everything that I do and how I do it. And so I go through that morning routine. But part of that morning routine is to now complete my drafts and set those listings live. And again, I'm talking about Poshmark here, just FYI. Um, so now the photos are in, the fields are complete, and all I need to do is write my title and write my description and perhaps look for a stock photo if I'm going to and perhaps look up comps if I need to. But I don't need to look up comps for every item. And I think that might be part of people's problems is that, you know, I've been doing it almost five years. So part of it is that. And part of it is I don't care. Like, I'm not going to look it up. Like if I want to price this at $50 because I'm happy to get $25 for it. And I know my business model is to send out up to 50% offers. I know that this item is going to sell anywhere from $25 to $50 unless they send me some other offer, which I may or may not accept. So for me, if it's of a certain level, I'm going to price it at 50. If it's of a certain level, I'm going to price it at 100. If it's of a lower level, I'm going to price it at 25. Why those particular ones? We've talked about this in the past. You should price on the category so that it will show up. If somebody searches by the price category, so if they search under 25, a $25 item will show up there. If someone searches 25 to 50 price range, a $25 item will show up there. And so by pricing it at 25 and not 24 or 28, you're going to show up in two different searches should someone search that way. So I, I buy into that hook, line, and sinker. I price on that as much as I can. Not every, I, you know, sometimes it's a $35 item. And so you got to just do that. But where I can, I do 25, 50, 100, et cetera. And I don't look up every single item. If it's a brand new to me brand and I think it's high end, but I'm not really sure, I'll look it up. But that takes two seconds. And we'll go over that, you know, in a second. Um, so that's, you know, I can write out a title in under a minute, you know, I can write out a description in two minutes or less, um, really less, because I'm just doing keyword, comma, keyword, comma, keyword, comma, keyword. <laughs> I'm putting a little snappy thing up front, perhaps on a good day, like super cute boho vibes or what, you know, something catchy up front. I'm putting keyword, comma, keyword, comma, keyword to describe the item. If I'm really feeling snazzy that day and what I recommend in my sales phrases guide video is to put, you know, another, you know, perfect addition to your summer wardrobe, a must have staple piece, blah, -de blah, you know, something nicey, cutesy, whatever, just to kind of close it out. And then I put my condition, which is always excellent condition with no flaws, unless it's not and brand new with tags. And I have uh, keyword text replacements for all of this. I say measurements in photos because I use, my fo I use my photo ready measurements form and I take photo of the measurements. So it's in the photos. I don't have to type all of that out. And that is part of my text replacement. And then I have a buyer confidence line at the bottom. And honestly, I'm changing it all today based on the new shipping discounts. So the new one now I could tell you, I talk about this in the shipping video that I did earlier today, which was like bonus out of the clear blue sky. I was not planning to do that video. 
how does it say now it says um so for a free shipping one it says ship same next day professional seller love it buy it this it this item, this item ships free. Save more with bundle benefits. 20% bundle discount, two plus items, and free shipping. So that's even shorter than the one that I had before. And so that's a text replacement as well. So literally most of my description is a copy and paste, though I, I don't actually copy and paste it. I do a text replacement. I have a Google Chrome extension called Text Expander. I've talked about this on my channel before. I set up all my text things. And then all I have to do is hit like a two button shortcut and everything pops in. And so the only thing that I'm really doing that's different and new and um, you know item specific is putting in the keyword, comma, keyword, comma, keyword, comma, keyword. So, you know, uh, knee length, pencil skirt, 100% wool, wool, kick pleat, pocket, whatever, whatever, back zipper, you know, whatever all the things are. And so I'm describing the item well, because I'm looking at photos of the item and I'm saying exactly what's in front of my eyes. I'm not repeating things. I used to do this all the time. I used to write size two and the brand and all these things. I don't do that anymore because it's in the title and it's in the drop down. So I don't waste my time anymore. I put exactly what I need to to describe the item and give them all the keywords so that the item can pull up in as many searches as possible so that the customer feels confident that I'm telling them everything there is to know about the item, but the condition, the buyer confidence, and if I can throw in a couple snappy little snapperoos of salesy language, I throw those in and that's it. And it goes so fast. Now, granted, I'm five years in, and so I know a lot more keywords, you know, now than I used to. And I am I have a lot of more muscle memory of doing it than I used to. And so I wasn't always that fast. But I think people make it into way more <laughs> than it needs to be. And so if you can just look at it as this is my listing template, and that's one of my tips. So getting into my tips, um, have a listing template. And mine is salesy describe, condition, buyer confidence. That's it. And so I have, if, if I were newer at this or having trouble, I would have my keywords list, which I had and I used and I developed and it's in my Etsy shop for you should you need a keywords list. I have my keywords list. I would have my sales phrases guide, which is also available should you feel that you need something like that. And I would have my template already, you know, in my inside my computer in a text expander. And when I pull up my draft, I'd plop in my template and then I'd consult my keywords list and consult my sales phrases guide, bang out the keywords and then decide if I need to look further into comps or for a stock photo. So that brings me to those two things. So checking comps for me is like I said, it's only if it's a new to me brand or maybe a brand I haven't sold in a while and I or, or I have a lot of this brand and it hasn't been selling. So maybe I want to change what I'm pricing it. Maybe the market is different than what I thought it was. So every once in a while, I will look things up. But all I do is go to Poshmark and type in something similar, White House Black Market Pencil Skirt. I look at the top two rows. There's four items across when you have it on your computer. So I look at four items. I look at four items, first and second row. I read off the prices and in my head, I say, okay, they range from 20 to 40. I'm gonna list it at 30. Then I go and I hit the filter for solds and I do the same thing, four across, four across. Okay, it's selling anywhere from 10 to 25. So. I could get anywhere from 10 to 25 for it. People are listing it anywhere from 20 to 40. I'm gonna list it at 30, maybe I'll get 20. That takes all of two minutes, if that. You don't need to find the exact item. You don't need to find the exact size, the exact color, the exact Lily Pulitzer print name. Like you don't need to do all of that. Just get a guesstimate and move on, because guess what? they're probably not gonna buy it for the price you list it for anyway. <laughs> so why bother putting all the time and effort into coming up with the perfect price when they're not gonna buy it for that anyway? They're gonna send you an offer. 
They're, you're going to get multiple lowball offers. You're going to send an offer out. You're going to run a sale. There's going to be 85 different things that happen. You're going to do a closet clear out. A million things are going to happen and it's never going to sell for your listing price anyway. I mean, you might get that one amazing person that in the middle of the night, they buy for full price. I hope that happens for you. But if you spend too much time trying to figure out the perfect price, you won't have listed 10 other items that could have also sold. And so the, the whole part of all of this is to keep it moving. Done is better than perfect. Get as many up as you can. Don't let being perfect or getting it right. There is no right. It's just whatever listed is right. And so getting it all up and moving through all these steps will keep you moving and keep you selling and keep you listing. And maybe if you're not so bogged down by all of the got to do it right and all of this stuff, it'll be maybe more zippy for you. I mean, for me, you know, I know that I can go in and zippy out my listings. And I mean, I'm doing 12 a day now. Now I will tell you, I haven't really been listing 12 new a day. I've been in complete full relist mode. So when March hit, that was the time I was supposed to start going from 10 listings a day to 12 listings a day. I haven't actually listed 12 new listings a day, but it's only two more than 10. So it's like, whatever. And 10, unless I'm doing a lot of research, which we'll get into in more in a second, is not taking me long, 20 minutes, 30 minutes to list 10. Where some people say it takes them 20 minutes to list one. You're never going to get anywhere that way. And I'm not saying that you have to list a million items. I'm just saying if you have a bunch of items to list, don't let it take you so long. Just list them and move on. Then you get to shop more. So anyway, okay. So, and then on the stock photo research. So this is another place where I think people can just get sucked into. And it happens to me too. <laughs> it does. But I, I put the brakes on it. You guys know, I think, you know, I'm pretty ruthless, um, especially with myself. And so I, you know, if it goes on for more than two minutes, unless it's a really high end item where I'm going to get $100, $200 or whatever for it, I'm not going to spend more than two minutes looking for a stock photo. And I only look for a stock photo if there is an indication that a stock photo is to be found. So if I know that it's J. Crew, White House Black Market, Chico's, Mm, uh, free people, Lily Pulitzer, ones that we know have a style number, maybe Banana Republic, ones that we know have a number, ones that's pretty proven that you can get a stock photo for. Those are the ones I'm definitely going to research. Oh, Zara. Like those are the ones I'm definitely going to research because I know I've had success in the past with finding those stock photos. So it makes sense to spend two minutes to find that stock photo. But there are some brands like J. Jill, I can never find a J. Jill stock photo. Never. I look at all the numbers. I can never get it. Like, it's so hard. So I don't even bother anymore. So what I do is I just go to Poshmark and put in a couple of keywords. J. Jill, Ponty Knit, Slim Pant, whatever, and bait, you know, whatever couple of keywords I can put in, or I use the filter for color and you know category and just see if with a quick scroll i can find that someone else already had the stock photo because sometimes people spend a long time <laughs> doing stock photo research and then you can just go in and kind of use their what they did it's there whether i find the stock photo on google or i find the stock photo on poshmark it doesn't really matter sometimes you find the stock moto stock moto the stock photo on google but it's actually a poshmark listing that's coming up because poshmark is really good you know with google search so don't spend a lot of time on it do a quick search with the number if it doesn't come up real fast like in a quick scroll move on, go to Poshmark, put in some keywords and see what comes up real quick. And chances are for the brands that it's harder to find the stock photo of, it's gonna keep being harder to, stock, to find that stock photo. And so there's a lot of them that I just don't bother anymore. My photo is gonna have to be good enough. I think I take pretty good photos and it is what it is. It is only though, if it's let's say a long item, something that you know a stock photo would capture. Like there was this Chico's fringe 
uh, jacket. So it's like faux suede or faux leather or whatever. No, what was it? Maybe it was real leather. I don't remember, but it was suede and it had fringes. And I'm like, I know the stock photo is going to show a woman swishing in it so that you could see the fringes move. Because if I were selling this jacket as Chico's, that's what I would want to show, right? So clearly the stock photo out there is going to be the swish. And lo and behold, I put in the number and bam, there's the swish. And I found the photo and I slapped it on the thing and it sold quickly. Because you showed how it was, you know, you showed the benefit in the best possible light. And the stock photo really captured that. Me hanging it here is not going to show the swish. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was a nice, bright photo, but it didn't show the swish. And so sometimes you need a stock photo to show the swish or to show the high, low, maxi dress kind of combo thing, or, you know, you know what, what you need, a wrap, you know, some something with a wrap maybe. There's just certain features of items that a stock photo really will do it justice. Or maybe color, it's black, it's navy blue, it's some kind of brown. And so you wanna show the, the detail in it. Um, then maybe those are the items you spend a little bit more time because you know that that's gonna really help you sell that item. And again, Aside from the fact that no, 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 you shouldn't use stock photos. It is what it is. So that's comps and stock photos. Let me see what the other tips were and then we'll hop into the chat and then the discussion will really start. Source with intention so you can list faster. So I already said, J. Jill is an item that I, or brand, that I can never find stock photos for. So if I am like, you know, at the thrift store, which I'm not these days, <laughs> but should I be at the thrift store picking out things? And, you know, I come across White House Black Market and I come across J. Jill and for whatever reason I had to choose. I choose the White House Black Market all day long because I know I can find a stock photo for White House Black Market nine times out of 10. You put in that 570 number, bing, bang, boom, you've got that. J. Jill, on the other hand, I can never find a stock photo for, so goodbye to you doesn't mean I wouldn't get it. I would still sell J. Jill. J. Jill is still a good seller. Um, but that's what I'm saying. Like if you sourced with the intention of things that would be easier for you to list, whether it's finding a stock photo or I like this, this is pretty, but I don't know. I mean, do you ever buy something and already the keywords start popping into your head? If they do, that's a good item to buy. If you look at this item and say, it's so pretty, what is it? <laughs> you know, don't buy it because if you don't know what it is now, yeah, you could research it and find out what it all is, but maybe it's not going to be worth your time. Um, maybe it is, and it would be a good learning experience, and then you can choose to do that. But if you're trying to list faster, source with intention so that you can list faster and keep those keywords in mind and keep the process of what you're needing to do. Uh, in mind as you're buying items. So there's that. Have your listing template we already talked about. So salesy, describe, condition, buyer confidence. I already talked about doing a keyword, comma, keyword, comma, keyword. Now some people say you're just putting in a bunch of tags and stuff. Maybe, you know, but I'm not really looking at them as tags. I'm describing the features. And so when you Go to some brands because I've I've studied a lot of descriptions that the brands put out. Like if you're on a White House Black Market listing, I don't know which one it is. So I'm going to say it is White House Black Market, but I don't really know. So one of them like literally just lists bullets like they don't make sentences at all. I think White House Black Market has sentences. I must be thinking of another brand. Um, but some of them literally just put bullets. There are no sentences in their description. So there's no rule that says you must describe an item with a sentence. I think the point is that you want it to make sense to the buyer and perhaps a sentence is more flowing and, you know, nice. But I also think that, you know, um, knee length, comma, pencil, your pencil skirt, comma, knee length, comma, kick pleat, comma, pockets, comma, back zipper is not terrible. It gives them all the information they need. And I'm busy and it gets the job done. <laughs> so if you want to write a full sentence, you certainly can. I'm not saying don't. I'm saying if you are a person that takes 15 to 20 minutes to list an item or 10 or five and you want to get faster, these are some of the ways to do it. I don't 
you know, shed any tears about the fact that I have no sentences in my listings. I just don't. Um, just describe what you have as best as you can, and that's it. That's it. <laughs> just describe what you have. Don't worry about the pattern name that you don't know if it's Lily Pulitzer. Don't worry about the style number that you don't have if it's whatever. Don't worry about the fabric tag that's cut off and you don't know exactly what this is. Just describe what you have. It's shorts. It's mid-rise. It's textured. It's this inseam. It's short shorts. It's dressy shorts. It's striped, you know, it has pockets. Just say what you know about the item that you have. Don't worry about the things that you don't know or don't have. Tell them what it is. And I'll always do the quote because, <laughs> you know, he's the person that I always watched when I was a new seller. And that's Chris Lynn from Daily Refinement. And he always says, take photos of the item like there's no description and describe the item like there's no photos. And that's what I do, I think. I mean, maybe every day isn't my best day, but I think I do that. And I think it works for me. The last thing I have under my tips is price for your business model. So don't worry about the perfect price for that item. Don't worry about what you think someone is going to pay or what the other people got for it or what you paid for it or what the retail price is. Don't worry about all of those things get a general gist of the market so that you're not saying something's 50 dollars item when it's clearly a 19 dollars item you know you want to have a general gist of the market which i just explained you know a few minutes ago how to do and then price for your business model because if you're going to go around sending out 50 percent offers let's say like i do you can't price at $19. You have to price at, let's say, $25. I mean, for the most part, $25 is kind of like on most items, like my lowest, because then you get, you know, $12, then there's a shipping discount or whatever. Now, a lot of this is, is in the flux of changing given the new Poshmark shipping dis discounts that came out today, which I did a video on earlier. So I am in flux with a lot of this because I do want to try to make use of that but I still am pricing for my business model. And the reason why I'm not gonna need to change a lot of my prices, even if I wanna offer free shipping within this new structure of shipping discounts, is because I priced assuming I was gonna send a 50% offer out with a shipping discount. That's how I price. So for me to just offer free shipping is actually like, better <laughs> you know so i mean if somebody buys my hundred dollar item with free shipping and instead of me having to send out a 50 percent offer with discounted shipping that's great for me so you know i don't know that that's what's going to happen but i would even still be ahead on a 30 percent offer with free shipping than i would a 50 percent discount with discounted shipping so i'm like kind of jazzed about it we'll see how it goes so those are all my tips that's possible things that are holding you back, what I do, and the tips that I had. So now I'm gonna scroll up, go back in time, see what everybody's talking about, see how we can get more of a conversation going about what you're running into, how you can list faster. So hey, I already said hey to flight attendant Flipper. Beth Tillman is here and she is an angel because she was actually one of the people that helped inspire, helped inspire helped inspire <laughs> this video today some of my reseller chat people someone else that just randomly asked and then also bat so it was great 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 hello i watched the posh shipping video good info i'm going to use it differently than you as my items have small margins already well i'm glad that you're gonna you know try it out and use it and you're positive about it and you want to make use of it in general because i did get some comments that were like this is terrible you know which i get you know and i know that people will have that uh, attitude and it's unfortunate, but I'm glad that you are open-minded to try to figure out, you know, how to make it work. So that's good. And thanks for watching. The AMH store TAS. I don't know what that is. Hi, Rebecca. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? Uh, Beth says, I'm go. Oh, I forgot I can do the thing. I always forget. I need like a post-it. Beth says, I'm going to have to go into a room and shut the door to list faster as my daughter's Dalmatian sits and barks at me. <laughs> 
I'm trying the list. Well, no, I did not add that to the list of things that are holding you back, Beth. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Barking dog in your face. That's yes, that could definitely be a distraction. That's really funny. No, Malia, my doggy, she could care less pretty much what I do all day. I don't really think she even likes me that much. <laughs> but she was my dog, my birthday present, but I don't think she likes me. I think she only likes my husband. So there's that. So she doesn't care what I do all day. Katie says, yes, researching stock photos and comps takes forever. But my point is it doesn't have to. And if it does, you need to have some, you need to set a timer, get one of those little egg timers, get a little Sandman thing, set your timer on your phone, talk to Alexa. Um, you know, do something like that to start put, holding your feet to the fire to either get it or don't get it. You know, either you can find it in five minutes. Can you, if you haven't found it in five minutes, what are the odds and chances that you will find it after 10 minutes? If you find that you're just maybe slower on the computer and if you put in enough work to find it, I'm not saying you are, I'm just saying in general, to to find it then maybe you know and so you need to put in that time and if it's worth it to you then fine fine but i do think people just kind of go down the rabbit hole and then they might end up not finding anything or they could find it in a quicker way or they're just they're putting the time into looking for ones that they may never find so i, I you know, I agree with you that it can take forever, but I don't agree with you that it should take forever. Bumblebee says, I really feel looking up comps is highly overrated. I seriously just pull a high price out of the air. So much goes into the decision to purchase. Surprised every time I get 20 to $50 higher. Interesting. So yeah, I mean, I agree. <laughs> just pull a price out of nowhere and, um, and use that. I mean, I think it needs to be in touch with reality. I think if you put $100 on, you know, American Eagle jeans, you know, like, I don't know that that's going to work out so well for you. Um, and I don't know that a person, if I'm buying and something seems so out of the realm, I'm not going to like that item hoping they're going to send me an offer because it seems like we're too far away. Um, doesn't mean I wouldn't send them an offer you know, or maybe even a low ball offer, but I, in, in their mind, you know, if I send a $20 offer for American Eagle jeans on their hundred dollar price, they're going to be like decline. She's sending me a low ball offer. And it's like, but it's American Eagle jeans. So I, you know, I definitely agree with you that searching for comps is overrated. I don't do it. And maybe if I had items that were more accurately priced according to the market based on some more in-depth research, perhaps I could get some more sales, perhaps. But I also do other things that I feel like also get me those sales, which is, you know, send out offers. I do other sales generating activities. Sometimes I participate in closet clear out, you know, um, I do bundles for people. I have promotions running. I do a lot of other things that I think helps encourages not only that one item sale, but you know, bundles and things that I'm not too worried about, you know, the pricing of an item on its own. Text expanded question mark, snow fee M. So yes, it's called text expander. Let me see. Oh, maybe it's auto text expander. Hold on, let me look at it. Um, this one that I have is called merch text. And it is, I don't know why it says auto text expander. The th when I hover over it, it says auto text expander, but it was designed for um, people that do merch by Amazon so that we could input our listing information more quickly. And so that community, which I'm also a part of, you know, they have all kinds of Google Chrome tools and extensions and stuff like that. And so I bought, I didn't, I don't even think I bought that. I think that was free, but you can go to the Google Chrome store, whatever it's called, and just look for a text expander or a text replacement or keyboard shortcuts or something like that. And a bunch will pop up. This is just the one that I have. But so I use an iPhone for my, you know, mobile device, iPhone, mobile device, whatever. I use the one that's in iPhone and you just go to like keyboard. Um, what is it? Keyboard 
general keyboard text replacements. And so I put them in there for my phone. But then on the computer, again, which is where I'm doing most of the typing, I use this little text expander, Google Chrome Majigger. And so it's called text expander, not expanded. I hope that helps. What else we got? Beth, I hope I agree that we should pick our own price. That has been working for us. By the way, just had a full price sale. Yes, Bing, I wish I should have a bell in here for like, if you make a sale while we're live, I could do a bell, cha-ching. That would be fun. Great, well, congratulations, that's awesome. Truth, <laughs> yay, I do speak the truth. I try to anyway, uh, who knows? It's my truth, let's put it that way. I speak my truth. Snowfeet says, keeping my space organized is a problem for me and discourages me. I have a space issue. <laughs> so that's probably a topic for a different day um, because I have a lot of thoughts on that. So maybe I'll write that down. Maybe that's something that we talk about. But I do have a few videos if you're newer to my channel um, about how I do my inventory system and how I've organized things. So, you know, perhaps that may... Um, help. I also did an updated reselling room tour about how I set up my reselling room and kind of being mindful and functional with space and how you use it and what to put where and why to put it there. I mean, things just don't, you know, float into the right spot. You kind of have to be intentional with it if you want it to work for you. Um, there was a time where I thought I was going to be a professional organizer. So uh, it's interesting how sometimes people can turn <laughs> You know, you might call it a sickness, like, you know, you have OCD or whatever. I mean, I don't actually have OCD, but, and it's not something to make light of. But when people have very organized particular tendencies, it's nice when you can find a profession <laughs> that allows you to build upon that. And so when I kind of realized being an event planner, how organized and things like that I was, I also thought about, you know, how how else could I use those organizing skills and those very detailed oriented skills? And I happened upon professional organizing, but I decided I don't want to deal with other people's stuff. And then here I am selling other people's stuff. So who knows how life takes you. Beth says, when you can't find a stock photo, what do you do? I stop and don't use a stock photo. <laughs> That's all. Like I give it two minutes. I mean, I really don't spend a lot of time. And like I say, I, I source with intention on brands that I feel more comfortable. I'll like, I like picking up Zara on purpose because I feel like a lot of time, not every time, but a lot of times I can find a stock photo for Zara. And so I purposely don't mind selling that as a bread and butter brand. White House Black Market, same thing. Some people snub their nose at it. I'll sell White House Black Market any day of the week because I know I can always find a stock photo. It's always going to look nice. If I put it up for 50, I send a 50% offer. Like every time somebody's going to buy it. I don't know what I just, I just sold a top today, White House Black Market. I mean, I, you got to keyword it right. Um, but most of the time they have what it's titled. And well, it's, I sold White House Black Market. Oh, Torrid, that's another one with good stock photos. Athleta, stock photos. And Jay uh, McLaughlin, I have a harder time finding stock photos. But so in my last several sales, I sold Athleta, easy to find stock photos. Bowden I sold, which didn't have a stock photo, but usually you can find a stock photo. So that was an oddball. White House Black Market, can usually find a stock photo. I'm, li I'm literally reading to you my last sales. Torrid, same thing. Jay McLaughlin, it was new with tags, so I did find a stock photo of that, but otherwise Jay McLaughlin is harder for me. Um, so those were my last one, two, three, four, five sales, and they were all easy to find ones. And so that's why I say, like, I try to focus on brands that I, I can list easier, that I can sell better, um, and try to work smarter, not harder in that regard. So when I can't find a stock photo, I stop looking. I just put in the style number. If there is one, if there is a number, I put it in. If that yields me nothing with a quick scroll, then I stop that search. And then I either go in Google or into Poshmark, just depends on what I'm doing. And I'll put in a few keywords. More broad is better than you could always hone in later. Like, um, like J. Jill or uh, J. McLaughlin pants. If I didn't know what these were, I would have put in McLaughlin black capri pants and see what happens. And they're called the J. 
J. McLaughlin black Newport Capri pants. And so that's how I was able to find that because I had the exact name. But if I didn't have the exact name, I would have put in J. McLaughlin black Capri pants. And then I'm sure something that's Newport would have shown up and I would have said, oh, that's what they are. Bing. And that's what, you know, so try to do the number. If the number doesn't work with a quick one, then I would go to the couple keywords. And if that doesn't work in a couple of quick searches and on Poshmark, when I do it, usually I search the solds first because what are the chances that I, you know, I found something that's listed right now, maybe, but more chances is that I've, because Poshmark is selling stuff all the time, more chances are that I found something that someone already sold. And so if I put in, you know, pants, Capri, black, J. McLaughlin sold, I'll find all the black Capri pants that sold from J. McLaughlin. I can just scroll through and find the ones obviously that have stock photos. And then of the ones that have stock photos, which are my pants? Oh, there's my pants. Bing, thanks for your stock photo, lady. Okay, plug it into my thing. Plus, those are already in square mode, which is great because square moding the other kind, you know, I, I find the link, then I open the link up on my phone, then I put it in the over app, and then I square mode it. And that's a pain in the neck. But I do it because it helps them sell. Um, so I hope that answers your question, Beth. Let me know what else you got. Allison says, I have been in and out, but have you talked about Google? <laughs> oh no, Allison. Hey, I don't even know what that is. Like I hear people talk about it and I'm like so behind on technology and things. And I'm sure it's probably amazing, but I have no, I don't even know what it is. So you say such a game changer for finding stock photos and good info, like the style name, retail price, et cetera. So what I would recommend to people, because I don't have any information on that at this time, is to Google YouTube videos about what to do with Google Lens, because like I don't even know what it does. And then you find out how you could use it to help you find stock photos, because I don't know. But thank you for bringing it up, Allison. Hoarder in training. Oh, hoarder in training. Do you, that is so funny. And the dog is wearing a wig. I love it. Okay. Do you use stock photos for your main photo? Yes. I use them, but not the first picture. Okay. I'm worried about the company pulling my listings and they think they will be enforcing that more since Poshmark is public. And when that happens, I will play along. So, so a couple of things on that. Yes. I use the stock photo for my main photo because I feel like Poshmark is a visual space. There are a lot of people that just want that, you know, and that's why I'm a big believer in like white space around your photo. And when I do my Poshmark closet reviews, I tell people like you need more white space because you're competing with stock photos. And so you need to have white space around it and then you need to be super bright. And if you can do that, then you can be just as good, you know, second fiddle, but as good as you can get to stock photos. So I do have it as my main photo. I do think you're right. And that now that Poshmark is public, there are going to be more problems. And I'm, well, I don't really know that it's about them being public or not. Like, I don't know about that. But I just think as they, I think Poshmark is not stupid. <laughs> so I think they turn a blind eye to many a thing. And so when there's a problem, I think they will address it. When the problem is big enough to get their attention, they will address it. Or when it, they are incentivized or or disincentivized not to address it, address it, they will. You know, I think it's like that. I think it's more of, I'll use this as an example. When I was selling on ThreadUp, which I still am, when I was selling on ThreadUp, I got the bright idea from seeing some others that why don't you just take your reclaims take a screenshot of the thread up, you know, pictures, and then throw it up on Poshmark with the thread up pictures. And then you don't really have to do anything. And I was like, that's genius. <laughs> and so I did it. And then I heard through our lovely Instagram community that Poshmark had contacted and took down a bunch of listings from someone and said, you know, all this stuff. And that thread up had, you know, said this cease and desist thing to Poshmark and that it was turning into a whole major thing. And as soon as I caught wind of that, I took them all down. Actually, what I did was a name your price sale 
on all of them. So I didn't have to lose out. I could just sell them all super cheap and get rid of them. And then anything that didn't sell, then I went ahead and took them down and took the photos myself. And that way I, that flushed my closet of that issue because I was somebody that tried to take the easy road and used ThreadUp's property, which is what it was, to do the picture. And I was afraid for my Poshmark closet, I was afraid for all of my statuses. And so I, I did that. So I see that coming for stock photos. But there was a period of time where I didn't use stock photos. And then I did. And then I saw the magic of stock photos. And so I'm, I'm making the business choice to go along for the ride and see what happens. And when I feel like, you know, I'm incentivized or disincentivized to then toe the correct line with that, then I will. And that's not maybe the best answer, but that's my answer. That's my honest answer. I can't, you know, I try to be as honest with you guys as I can. So I, I know we shouldn't, but I do. And so that is that. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I do see it coming though. So I do think we all need to be careful, but here's the thing. If Poshmark said tomorrow, you will, you know, we will remove your whole entire shebang unless you take all your um, stock photos down. It would be fine because all I would have to do is go through and take off the stock photo. I have good photos and they're all in there and they're all, you know, the, the cover photo would have been edited. I edit the first photo of every single one so that if that needed to be my cover photo, it can with no other additional work. So if they said tomorrow you're finished, Rebecca, you know, I would be able to make that change. Now, if they went and just took everything down, that would be a real bummer. <laughs> but, um, you know, I could, I could make the switch really quickly and I wouldn't have to adjust really much of anything else because I do take good photos. I'm proud of my photos. I just try to enhance my chances of selling something with a photo that does the item a little bit better justice. So um, I hope that that, you know, I think you're probably doing a better thing than me by having it not be your cover photo. But here's the thing. If they are going to get to the point where they're having people take down the photos, the cover photos, I don't know that it's going to matter whether it's the first photo or the second photo. We're probably both going to be in just as much trouble. So I think it's a matter of use it until you have to stop. And then just then just quit cold turkey and pull the bandaid off and and do no more stock photos, um, and see how that goes. Let's see. Oh, a whole bunch of stuff popped in here. Okay. Allison says it's easy. Well, I'm glad it's easy for you. I don't even know what it is. So I need to. I will have to look into it because I have no idea. And usually when someone says that's easy, now I'm like, it's probably not going to be easy for me. That's why I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> I'm so I'm so the worst like borderline millennial that ever existed. Um, Beth Tillman overlay question mark and you know way more tech stuff than I do and I think you mean tech stuff not text stuff. <laughs> You're typing. This always cracks me up. So overlay. I don't know what did I say for overlay. Um, I don't know what overlay what. I said overlay a few times today because of what I'm doing with my um, uh, photos for adding free shipping and stuff. Is that how I used overlay? Remind me of what my context was because I don't remember how I said it. But overlay meaning like put something on top. So I made this graphic. I talk about this in the other video, which I would love for you guys to go watch. So I made like a shipping graphic that says it's free shipping. And then I just put that over my original cover photo. So it's an overlay. I think that's like, you know, a graphic design term. I don't know. I don't really know. Um, so hopefully that's what you meant. Okay. Hoarder in training says my pictures are good and I use photo room or I edit my pics to get the background a bright white. Excellent. Also, definitely check out Google. <laughs> it's a game change. Okay, everybody, I will. <laughs> Google lens. I will. My, I think my sister talked about that too. She's a reseller too, part-time. And it's like, it just takes me like, you know, like today 
I saw the shipping discount thing and I'm like, I'm going to hop right on it. I'm going to get the first video out about it. And like, I jumped right on it. Cause I understood that it was like a sales technique thing, whatever, but anything that's like technology, mm, I'm just a slow boat to China person. Like I just, it takes me a long time to get on board. But it's good that you do some editing. Photo Room, I like Photo Room, and I do use it for a few things. But I don't use it for everything because I do feel like if you if your photo is not bright, so the actual item itself is not bright, then it looks odd on this bright white background. So I could probably with mine, because I have the daylight lights and I edit them to be brighter, I could put it on there, but I don't like, I just don't want to do all that work. I find that daylight lights, my Arctic white photo backdrop, which I have linked in my Amazon store, the lights are linked in the Amazon store, like that setup plus the pick tap go lights on is like okay for me. I don't feel like I need to do much else. The only time I do photo room is when it's really long, a, a long item, and I want to cut out the sides because you could see the sides of my backdrop. That's when I do the photo room thing. What I see a lot, and I don't know if you're someone that does this, perhaps not, but I see people take a dark photo, and so they think, I'm going to edit my photo. And so it's a dark photo and then go shove it in photo room and it's still a dark photo, but now it's on this bright white background. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know if that's better. Um, maybe for Google purposes, because it's a, it's, it's not, you know, it's not your bathroom door. It's not a purple wall. So it's a white background, but the, but the item is still not shown in a bright way. And I think that is more important than a white background. But I do think that the background should be clean and clear. So if it's a hot mess in the back, then that's a different story. Hmm, so that's neither here nor there. Okay, Caitlin Flores says, Google, here we go, another one. Google Lens is amazing. All you do is take a photo of the item and it will search Google for that item or very similar ones and show you the results so you can quickly see the results on Google. Well, Caitlin, thank you for the idiot's guide version for me because that's exactly what I needed. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, that sounds cool. I've never done that. I wonder, so are you doing it, I guess, on your phone? Is it also on the computer? Because like if you, the way I did my process was that I would load in the photos on my phone. Then I'm coming to the computer to do the listing. So I'm trying to think of at what point would I wanna be doing this Google Lens thing? And is it an app or is it within Google, the lens? So that I need to, to figure out and see where I could put it in my process. But that's very interesting, and I appreciate you sharing that. That was a good explanation. Hoarder in training says, I'm part-time, and I have 3,400 active. Oh, my gosh. That is not very part-time. That is amazing. Hence, my name, Hoarder in training. LOL. Love that. No, I think that's great. You have a lot of active items. That is wonderful. I, I, I mean, you must be doing it a long time for being part-time to get up to that amount. Beth, do you measure your sell-through rate? How do you track that some change you made, like the shipping fees thing actually works? Well, I don't. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm kind of a go with it kind of person in some ways. And so what I do for sell-through rate, because I, I'm not a math person, I don't like doing a lot of calculations and figurations. So what I do is I see how many items I listed that week and how many items I sold that week. And that tells me generally what's going on. And like when I share my what sold on Poshmark videos, usually that's when I figure it out for the first time because I'm putting in all the, the numbers and like, you know, the bare minimum math that I do into that video, you know, I pull it all together, the data to share with you guys. It's one of the reasons why I actually like doing the video because I say I'm pulling it for the video to share with you to do the video, but really it's good for me and my business to do. But if I wasn't doing the video, honestly, I don't know if I'd pull all the information on a weekly basis. So I pull the info to do the video, that's where I see my stats and that's where I can kind of like get a feel from, frequently because the week had just passed for what's gone on. And so I could say I listed 60, I sold 30. 
So I sold half of what I listed. I'm sure that there's a better way to do it. And I've seen some people do it like I do it. And I've seen some people do it with like, it's the percentage of how much you have listed, not how much you listed that week. It's of your closet. So if I sold 30, but I had 300 items, that's 10%. Whereas I say I listed 60 and I sold 30, that's half. So that's why I say like, you know, anybody can fuzzy math their way out of anything. I don't know what the real way is. I've never really actually looked it up. I just do what makes me, you know, what informs me. And so if I listed half the items that I sold, I'm good with that. I don't need to look any further or do any other calculations. I feel happy about that. And I take that and I go. Um, sometimes it's a hundred percent sell through, I guess you could say, because I'll list 60. I'm just saying 60. Cause I remember that those were the, some of the numbers in the last couple of videos, like I listed 60 and I sold, or I listed 61 and I sold 60. Like, yes, if I listed as many as I sold, yes. <laughs> so, I mean, to me, that's all I really pay attention to. And then as far as tracking the changes, like I made a note because I track how much I list, how m okay, I track the number of items I've listed and the value of those items. So if I listed 10 $100 items, that's $1,000 of value added to my closet. So I track that number daily. And then I track how many packages I sold, you know, how many sales and the total value of the sales. And that's how I also get the numbers for my video. And it's good for me to have. And so I see that on a daily basis because that's a daily habit of mine. Now, sometimes I'll go in and like this past week and a half, maybe even two weeks at this point, I've just been relisting my whole Poshmark closet. So I have not listed anything new and I can tell already that my sales are down. Uh, I think it was 700 the week before and then 800 last week when I checked it. So I could tell that my sales are down, but not by much that I haven't listed any new items. Now, do I know that that's exactly why? Maybe if I had listed new items, I still would have resulted in $800 in sales? No, I have no idea. But I know on there what I'm doing listing-wise, and then I can kind of you know, see, well, what happened sales-wise? And is there any, you know, correlation or whatever. So hopefully that kind of answers your question. Like as far as doing this free shipping thing, I'll know when I look at my solds, let's say in a few days or next week or whatever, and like I can see all my sales or any of those ones that I did the free shipping majigger on, like where I put my icon overlay on and I, you know, did the discounted shipping. Like if, if, an overwhelming amount of my sales list or my sales feed has those in it, that's going to tell me, okay, yeah, that might have done something. Um, like I just told you one, two, it was five of my last five of my last five sales were brands that I usually have stock photos for. So I mean, you can just kind of go off of what you find anecdotally. I don't really, you know, I'm not I like statistics, but I don't really want to like do the math exactly. Um, so we'll see. I like just doing experiments and kind of getting a general gist, if that helps. Allison, you can use it directly in Google. It's a little gray button with the camera icon. Okay, if you download the Google app, you can use it on your own photos. Hmm. Google app, I'm writing it down. Because I, I might do it at that point. Let's see. I'm going to try it. So take a photo of your Lily shorts. Use Google Lens and you will find the print name, style name, stock photo, etc. Yeah, I will, so they weren't my Lily shorts. It was a reseller chat client. So I will tell her about that. I'm not sure if she tried or not. Um, but that was the hang up for her was like the style name. And she knew the style name because it was the Callahan short because it said it inside the short. So that's always good. But the print name she was getting stuck on, I was like, I would just describe the print like this and, you know, do the best you can. So, but that's good. Uh oh, what happened here? Uh, and then I'll go through this chat here. If you have any other last things, put them in. This hour went really fast. I can't believe it. Um, I'll go through this part of the chat and then and then we can wrap it up. Google Lens. This was a good, good conversation today. Google Lens is 
just okay for me. Maybe I'm not looking correctly. I will have to watch. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need to watch a video too. But like now at least I know what it is. I've heard people mention it, but I just like when I hear new tech things, I just kind of tune it out. <laughs> I don't know. Like the worst. Um, I find that photo room really helps make our amateur photos look professional. It's a big time saver. Yeah, because it, it gives that complete stark white background where you can tell it wasn't actually against a background. It looks like it's behind a, you know, a computer screen completely blank, you know? And so that is what's wonderful because it's, it's removing the background, I guess is what I should say. It removes the background so that what is left is just the computer white. And so that's what makes it so cool. So I definitely think there's value there, but I don't do it for everything because it, uh, it's time consuming. But come a time when I can't use stock photos anymore, I probably would use it more, um, for sure. Uh, Allison says to Beth, keep trying. Every so often it will fail. It's thought a pair of Lulu leggings was a pile of bricks of math. <laughs> I don't want to get them demonetized. I'm not going to talk about that. I don't know what that is. Uh, I have wondered that, Hoarder and Training says, if there's a way for them to see if you are using stock photos without going into your listings, I'd be so sad if so. I mean, I don't know, but I'm sure there's some magic way or, you know, they have somebody or they're going to have to hire somebody to do that because if they're if somebody's coming at them they're going to want to rid the site of everything they're not going to just rid the site of cover photos and hope nobody's paying attention like we you know they're going to take when they're ready to take it seriously they're going to take it seriously and then we all have to go along Beth, I wish this was in Zoom as I keep nodding my head. <laughs> Overlay is, no, it's not an app, the Over app. There is an app called Over, O-V-E-R. It is yellow. I think I did a video about how I use the Over app. You can't really see it. Over and Typorama. Those are the two mostly that I use on my phone to like make graphics and stuff. I use over a lot for things because it's already on my phone. But when I'm on the computer and I'm making graphics, I use Canva. So I don't know. I think each one probably is also on the other place. And it would be wise if I figured that out. But I haven't gotten that far because whatever. Allison says, you'll figure out Google Lens in a hot second. It's easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens. I don't know. Sometimes if everyone gets it, that's usually when I don't get it. So we'll we'll see how it goes. Rhonda Eberlein, Google Lens is an app on your phone. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I need to I need to then do that. Um, I need to do that. Okay, Beth, I do not have a great place to take photos. We are pressed for space and blank walls. Photo room and PicTap Go work great. Although I dream of a wall and photo lights, baby steps. I mean, and that's the thing, you know, for people that don't have a white wall, you can easily put up the white paper like I do. And now you have a white wall. And if you don't have the, you know, lights, then you do your daylight and, and, you know, you make do with what you have, but yes, pick tap go can really do an amazing job. And then photo room as well. I think, you know, the main thing, even if your wall wasn't white, but it was taupe or beige, or even if it was pink, blue, whatever, as long as it's clean and clear, because my problem is when people take photos in front of all this stuff or, you know, the door and the thing, and it's like, or on the bed or worse on the floor. When I, I mean, in Poshmark closet reviews, I'm just like, no, stop doing that <laughs> because it, it, it doesn't set you apart. And there, you know, if you ever go on Poshmark and try to shop, you, you can easily go to the people that kind of know what they're doing because they're photos are so much obviously different than the random Joe Schmo person just selling their stuff. And, you know, it's not that I don't want random Joe Schmo person who's just selling the stuff out of their closet to sell it. I do. I want those people to sell it. But if someone's trying to make this their living or this, or their part-time side hustle and they've made investments and they're really trying and they're going out and buying items, 
then this is an easy thing that you can do to set yourself apart is how you showcase your item. You know, there's so many other things that you can do that I talk about in closet reviews and stuff, but like, I'm just such a big, like, you have to show the item in a clean and clear space so that they know, so that the potential buyer knows that you're taking care of it and are going to send them a nice item and not the item that was at the bottom of your hamper a minute ago. <laughs> You know, like I just, ugh, ugh, it gets me every time. Hoarder and training. I understand what you're saying. Sometimes after photo room and the item will look fake and darker. Yeah, exactly. And it, if it does, I go and turn it up the exposure in my regular picture photo editor and then it looks nice. Okay. So, and that's probably like what I'm doing in PicTap Go. So it's the same thing. Good. Both app and within Google. Okay. So that's good. So I will. That's going to be my homework. Uh, Shell Zoo gifts Michelle's closet. You can do Google image search on your laptop. Google Lens is just the app name. Okay. All right. I'm going to really work on this. I use it when I'm thrifting in store and it's so helpful. Yes, I would imagine it would be. I mean, because I've even thought of this, how I said like, oh, there goes a chat. How I've said, like, try to source with intention so that you can buy items that will be, you know, faster and easier to list. I mean, there is going to come a point sometime, preferably before they pull the stock photos out from under us, that I just only buy things. Like, I won't buy it unless it has a stock photo. Like, if I'm actually at a thrift store, which we know I'm not really doing. But if I was at a thrift store and I found this whatever... I would look up on my phone, can I find a stock photo immediately right now? Or I don't care if it's the most perfect thing, I'm not buying it. Like that, that could easily be something that I do in the future. Cause the, I'm getting to be like a cr crotchety old person I'm, within reselling. And I'm like, I'm not doing that anymore. Nope. I'm going to, I'm going to be like, you know, the little old, like the little 80 year old lady that just scoots to the front of the line of the bathroom. Cause she's like, I'm 80. I'm not waiting in this line. I'm just going to go ahead of everybody. And I don't care. You know, that old little old lady, I'm going to be that little old lady, but about reselling stuff like, nope, has one little thing. Nope. Not selling it. Not selling it. If it don't has this, if it doesn't have a size tag, not selling it. If I can't find a stock photo, like, nope, not doing it going to the front of the bathroom line. Hoarder and training. I do two Rhonda and I rarely look up style numbers anymore. I really love it when listing shoes. Oh, I need to get on this. Oh man. Caitlin Flores. I've never used it on my laptop as I do my listing on my phone, but I've used it in both through Google photos. And I just recently downloaded the Google lens app. Okay. So, all right, we got to do the app. I think that's going to make me happy is the app. Beth, I'm okay with the go for it method, all of the analytics seem to take a lot of time and may not be statistically significant and not a good return on time investment. Economics degree, ugh. Oh my God, I hated economics. <sighs> I hated it. I remember a lot of the principles only because my professor of um, economics, his name was Robert M. Dunn Jr. And he was highly entertaining of, you know, like I'm a sucker for little old men and he was a little old man and he was <sighs> really entertaining. And, but I don't think he meant to be. I think, you know, we just made fun of him a lot. <laughs> so I remember like all these principles because he would be like writing crazy on the board and like all this stuff. So I remember actually a lot of economics things, even though I hated that class. Um, and I was a sociology major and I had to do a thesis. And so when you say statistically significant, it sends chills up and down my spine because I had to like make sure all my data was, st these data are statistically significant. <sighs> it's not always accurate, but it's a quick way to search items. Thank you, Caitlin. I think that is awesome. I'm excited. Lauren uh, West, what is your opinion on share groups? Oh boy, I just had a bad experience with a larger one. The members apparently very catty and I got uncomfortable seeing the posts here to sell, not socialize for me. So it's so funny. I mean, I haven't done a share group in like years, like actual years, like at least two years. Yes. And on Poshmark, I was never big into share groups. I did a few from time to time when I would like get a bug up my butt, like, oh, I really want to try to grow. Let me just try to, you know, network around and whatever. But I really never liked it. I, you know, because it's, it's people that have too much time on their hands. 
hands, making rules for everybody. And I get it. They're organizing out of the good of their heart. And I, I don't mean to be mean to anybody that organizes a share group because I'm sure it takes your time and whatever, but you're also getting something out of it too. But I did find it very, you know, not, not my cup of tea. I'm very no nonsense. I just want to get in and get out, do what I have to do. And then find it better to do my own thing most of the time. And so I don't, I don't, I would not be involved in a share group now. No, I would not. So I, I don't have a high opinion of them. I'm, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not judging anybody for being a part of it, but I don't think it's a good use of time. Now I will say, uh, and I talked to someone recently who used to be on Tot Spot with me and shout out, I haven't done a shout out in a long time to my Tot Spot mamas who used to sell baby clothes on an app called Tot Spot, which then got bought out by Poshmark. And this was, you know, a good five years ago now. And that's how I got started in reselling was selling Geo's baby clothes on Tot Spot. And so in Tot Spot, you did need to have share groups because there really was like, no other way to do anything else. The functionality was just not there. And so you you would sign up for these share groups and they had listings for the share groups and people would all gather and then you would sign up and then you would say who's you did. And like, it was like a whole thing. And so at like eight o'clock at night, the eight o'clock share group and like we're all sharing everybody else's stuff. And the point is I share yours and 10 other people's and they share mine and 10 other people's. And so we're all commingling each other's stuff. But I don't know. It's whatever it is. I don't think it's a good idea now. I think there's a lot of functionality now for you to take care of yourself. Hoarder and training. Do you think someone could make good money full-time selling bread and butter clothing items? And is it sustainable and something we could do until retirement? Your thoughts? Well, I guess it depends on how old you are until you could do it till your retirement. But I, it's so funny that you bring that up because to, um, not today, Today, Tuesday, what day is today? Thursday, Tuesday. <laughs> Guys, like, I don't know why anybody listens to me. I'm a hot mess all the time. Bread and butter items. So I was going to do a video on Tuesday about it, but because of the vaccine kicking my butt, or maybe that was before, I think that was the day I got it. But before that, I had a couple other things what was going on? It just like through this whole week, I've been like one thing after another has thrown me off everything I planned. <laughs> and so I was going to do a video on Tuesday about bread and butter, but then I ended up just airing these closet reviews because I didn't have time to record the video. Uh, there are some videos about bread and selling bread and butter items, which are pretty good. I've watched a few of them. And so probably most of them, if not all of them, I'm sure have good points. I have other thoughts than what I saw out there. And so that's why I thought it was worth it to do my own. I don't like to redo the same thing. Like if I feel the exact same way as somebody else's video, I'm not going to do it. But if I feel differently, then I think it's fair game to do the same topic, but a different title. I also wasn't sure if it was something that I should do for a live or if it was going to be a regular video. So maybe it'll be a live. But so I do have thoughts. I will share them. Stay tuned for them. I think it's possible that a full-time person could make a full-time living selling bread and butter items. But I don't think it's possible for a person who's not, you know, like you have to be really on point to do it. Like you need to be working full-time hours. You need to be knowing your stuff about these brands, your photos need to be on point, your keywords need to be, I mean, like you need to be a good seller, I think, to sell full time and make full time just selling bread and butter items. And by bread and butter, I mean the J Jill and the Chico's and the White House Black Market and the J Crew and like Loft, whatever, you know, because you need to know what to sell. And that's kind of what I wanted to do the video about was, it's not really just about brand anymore. And so I think that there's a topic there to be discussed. Now, as far as is it sustainable, I mean, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know if any of this is sustainable. I mean, I think about that sometimes. I've made this choice to be a stay-at-home mom before to be in, you know, to go back to work at some point. Now that I've made this business out of thin air five years later, uh, you know, this year is going to be my hundred thousand dollar year as far as business, not what I actually pay myself. Um, 
you know, I think I've created a viable business, but as we see, these platforms change all the time. You have to constantly be changing with them. And we don't know what's coming down the pike. You know, we don't know in 10 years if we all are, I mean, I've said this before, like what if in 10 years we all just wear sackcloth bags? Like what if there is no fashion? What if society changes to the point where we all have to wear hazmat suits all the time? (laughs) I mean, I know it's like I'm being crazy girl right now, but like, you don't know, like we're in, it's weird out there. (laughs) Like you just don't know. So I don't want to say yes, because I don't know that even for myself. And that's why I like diversifying my income. And that's why I like talking about different kinds of things and having my print, you know, my print on demand shirts on merch and why I like making my courses and having my Etsy products, because, you know, I don't know what's going to go on with reselling, but if I can learn all of these different kinds of businesses, then maybe whatever I do after reselling, I can just boom, start right back up again. I have a YouTube channel. I've made printables. I, you know, I can do merch and I can make courses. Now I know how to do all that. So if tomorrow I want to talk about pesto sauce, I can make a channel about pesto sauce. I can make printables about, printables about pesto sauce and shirts about, pe- I've actually, it's crossed my mind because I really do like pesto sauce. <laughs> so, so there's that. Um, so I think when you work for yourself at home like this, I think you need to think about it broader than what it actually is, allowing for the possibility of change in the future. Because while all indicators are saying that the resale thing is just gonna get bigger and bigger, things change. What if we solve global warming and then nobody cares about the environment anymore and then we all go back to not caring about, the, you know, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know that that's gonna happen. I don't know. Okay, we are getting very over time. This has been a great show today. A um, couple. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go up to this, and then we're gonna go. Okay, let's see. I have to run into other. I have run into other resellers while sourcing that won't buy items unless they can find a stock photo. I get all their discards. Well, there you go. And that's for my next disguise. I love that. And that's why when people say it's so saturated, you know whatever, Rebecca, you're going on YouTube, sharing all your secrets, not like they're, you know, amazing secrets, but you know, you're sharing all your information. I said, because you know what, what I find is not what you find. And today I found the, you know, loft dress size eight and tomorrow you're going to find it in a size 10 in Milwaukee and you know, someone else, there's so much to go around. There's so many clothes and so many people looking for different kinds of things that what I won't sell you will, what you won't, I will. Um, You know, there's plenty to go around and I truly believe that. So I think that's great. Good, 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 good. And the thing is too, everybody has to start somewhere. As new people start, their threshold for what they are willing to do will be less. And I'm not saying like, you know, I'm too good for things or anything like that. I'm just saying I'm fine tuning what works for me and what makes me happy about this business. You can tell right here, I've mentioned this before, these damn items, I haven't steamed them yet. They're still here. They're always here. I haven't seen them because steaming doesn't make me happy. I don't want to steam them. And honestly, I like, I'm going to pull these and they're going to go in reseller boxes soon because they're, it's flax, it's costs and it's go to flax. And that's a Rachel Zoe, I think, and a J Crew. I kind of want to sell this J Crew, but um, I don't want to steam things. I have a nice steamer, like a super duper heavy duty steamer, but I'm like, I, at, I'm at the point where I don't want to sit there and steam an item. Her name's Sandy. She's very nice. She does a good job, Sandy, my steamer. I don't want to see Sandy. I don't. And Amy, my half hanging mannequin, I don't want to put things on Amy. It's a pain in the ass to put things on Amy. I don't want to deal with Amy. So I'm just, you know, like I said, that old crotchety old lady that goes to the front of the bathroom line. Lauren West says, you are hilarious. (laughs) Love it. Well, it's just a, just a funny show over here. I'll tell you what, um, mystery box Love it. Mystery box of my sack cloth outfits. <laughs> Thank you for the laughs today. I need them. You know, it's so funny because I don't really come on here trying to be funny, but it inevitably comes out what a hot mess I am. And then you guys laugh at me and that's fine. I don't mind. Um, I have my big girl pants on so I can take it. But 
Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing is like, we sell other people's old clothes. Like we can't take it too seriously. And, you know, we don't know what the fashion trends are going to be. I mean, part of me, I think sometimes it's like, you know what, all these low rise pants that I pass on right now, because everybody wants high rise. I'm like, I should be buying them and shoving them in another storage unit because in five years, guess who's going to be on the hunt for vintage low rise jeans? It's everybody. And here I had buckets of them and I discarded them and I didn't sell them or I donated them back or I didn't buy them. And, you know, if we just gave it a little time, I'm sure everybody's going to want their muffin top hanging out again and, you know, their thongs hanging out the back. So it's like it all goes around at this point. It's it's actually just shows you how old you are, because when you can start to recognize these, patterns, it's like I've seen that before. Oh, man. Oh. Uh, yeah. So anyway, hoarding in training. I think like that too, Rebecca, the thought scares me of going full time because I can't turn back and make this money at my job, but I'm miserable and in chronic pain. I just want to be happy. Oh my God. I want you to be happy too. And here's what I say about this because life is short, but you do have to make sure you're okay. And so, you know, I am very lucky that my reselling does not pay our bills. I cannot support my family at this time on my reselling, but going from having zero business to five years later now, having a regularly dependable paycheck that I pay myself while it's not much, going through everything I've been through and looking forward to the future, I can say I have figured out how to make a sustainable business for myself. Now, everything might change and I'll have to go with it, but I've been able to do it. Now, I don't have to worry about health insurance because I'm on my husband's health insurance. And so that's important. Um, but I put money away for my retirement. I put money away for my retirement. You betcha. Just because I work for myself doesn't mean that, you know, just because I don't have a 401k doesn't mean I'm not putting away money for my retirement. And okay, so um, retirement, what was the other thing? Retirement, health insurance, and then being happy. This makes me happy because I'm doing my own thing. And so now I'm I'm building it to where the money will come. I think you can't just make the leap and hope for the best because I do think it takes time. It may not take you as long as it takes me because I had little geo home with me. You know, I'm not always doing the business like I am now. Now I'm growing by leaps and bounds in, in parts of my business because I can put full-time energy into it. But you know, before, you know, I couldn't really because I had the one and a half year old that was about to knock the lights over every two seconds. So I think you should be scared of going full time, but I don't, I don't think that means give up on your dream of going full time. I think that means work in tandem as best as you can and set yourself up for success. Sock away, hold on, sock away money so that you can have a savings net so that when you do go full time, you don't have the pressure and you're not selling out of desperation um, because I can see that being an issue. And it doesn't mean that you can't turn back. Just because you leave a job doesn't mean you can't ever go and get another job. I mean, I've thought about that, you know, leaving the event and hospitality space to be a stay at home mom. If I wanted to go back to that environment, I could. I mean, I worked in that environment. It's been a while. Will it be harder if you have a gap in your resume? I'm sure. But you get something and then you work your way back up again. There's, oh, you know, and I don't want to be like, there's always a job, but because I'm sure different things are, you know, harder for different people or whatever and certain locales and different jobs, but like there's always a way to make money. And I think resellers are proof of that. And actually with everything going on right now, I wish I could scream from the mountaintops to some people that are hurting Oh my God, just sell something you have, you know? Um, I don't, I, I know that so many people are hurting right now and there's many people that are doing whatever they can. And then I think there are some people that don't even know that they could make some money right now if they tried because they don't even know about reselling. I was one of those people. I didn't know about reselling until I did. And I wish there was more talk about this and I wish more people knew about it. Not because I want there to be more competition for us, but because people are hurting and children are starving and moms 
are home with their kids because they can't, you know, because they have to watch them for school, giving up their career and feeling worthless right now. And that breaks my heart. And so they could sell something in their house and feel and feel like they're contributing. I, I can't tell you how passionate about that. I like it makes me so upset. Um, and yeah, so I don't know. So for you, make a plan, think about it. Don't act rashly, but make a plan and work toward that plan every day with your goal in mind to come home and work for yourself and not go back to a job. But if it doesn't work out working for yourself, then you go back to a job. Like you can always go back to a job, even if it's not the job that you had. You can o you can always go back to a job. It's not going to be like this for forever, you know. This economy, it's not going to be this way for forever. Sorry, I swiped sloppy. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Sorry, I swiped sloppy. I don't know what that means. Um, I have a helper, and she steams and takes photos for me. I hate steaming. LOL. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, that is great. Snowfeet says great information. Thank you. We're gonna wrap this up here because I gotta go get Geo. I'm gonna be late. Amputee Adventures doesn't sound like a lot of listing going on. Hello, every. This wasn't a listing party. I never said we were listing here. I said we're gonna learn how to list faster. <laughs> I was never planning on listing here. No, no. I need to concentrate for that. I don't know how people have like YouTube on and are listing. No, I can have the news on. And then I can list because I can just pop in and out, pay attention. But like, that's why I haven't been on Clubhouse recently because I'm like, there's a lot of stuff that I can't do <laughs> when I'm listening to Clubhouse. Like, I have to pay attention. Yes, I've been watching Rebecca since the beginning. Did the beginning of me, like my channel? That's awesome if you have been. I appreciate that if, that, if that's what you mean. Four hour work week. <laughs> Real Liz. Uh, I don't know, Lizu. I would love to wear low rise again as long as I can get the body I had when I was wearing them again. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Nope. High rise for me until yes, <laughs> until that. Never put all your eggs in one basket. Be an entrepreneur, not a reseller. Good point. I like that. I like that. Entrepreneurs resell and other streams of income. Yes. And that's the thing. And that's why I like doing what I'm doing. And why I'll never be the biggest reseller. Like I say, I want a hundred thousand dollar business. I never said I want to sell a hundred thousand dollars reselling. I'm sure I'll get to that at point, you know, at some point too. But this year, that's not what's going to happen. I'm going to make a hundred thousand dollars revenue in my business across all my income streams. I'm not going to resell a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, may maybe I will, and then that means I will have made, you know, $200,000 or whatever. Anyway, okay, I got to go get Geo. Otherwise, poor kid's going to have abandonment issues at school because his mom didn't come because she's yip yapping on YouTube with all you guys. <laughs> so <laughs> this was the longest live I ever had. And also, I feel like maybe the most amount of people here, there's 32 people. And like, you know, obviously, Rally Roots has like 590 or however many people they get. But 32 people to me is like wonderful. So thank you. Oh, 34. Thank you everybody for joining. Also, I didn't say I hit 5,000 subscribers yesterday, I think, but I didn't, I didn't feel good yesterday due to the vaccine. <laughs> so um, I didn't make a big thing about it. I posted about it today and I will do some kind of celebration about it. Um, I just got to think of something and, you know, figure out what to do with it. So, but thank you all for being here. I do appreciate it. Last comments. Then we go, thanks for the talk, Rebecca. Yes. Since you first started reseller mom. Yeah. When I was the reseller mom show, I'm not a mom, but I still watch since the beginning. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. I love your truthfulness and your communication skills are amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know what I'm saying half the time, but it always is coming from a place of love, I promise. <laughs> and like, you know, realness. Cause I, I get that comment a lot. Like you're always so real or you just say it like it is. And it's, I don't know any other way to be. It feels really uncomfortable to say things that are, you know that I don't actually feel. I'm like a hard on the sleeve kind of person. It's really hard for me to say things that I don't actually believe in. And um you know, so I don't. <laughs> and and that's why I also don't mind when I sell my stuff, like when I sell like a course or my Etsy products or whatever, because I do believe in them. And so I don't mind selling them because I know I made it to help me and I know it's going to be helpful to you. And so I don't mind telling you because that's just really how I feel. It's not like I'm trying to sell you this thing that's like, you know, a scam. <laughs> it's like, 
it's a keywords list. Either you're going to like it or not. I don't know what to tell you. There's actually 400 words on there. There's not 392. So anyway, I got to go pick up the little squirt. Thank you so much, everybody. Last time, I appreciate it. I wish you all the best for a great week of sales. Check out that video from earlier today if you didn't about what I think about these new Poshmark shipping discounts. I would love your feedback if you want to leave some comments there. So thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.